So I thought I had like 15 more minutes, but I didn't. My name is Jim Ward, and um, I make things. So I make songs, and I make records, and I make tours. Sometimes I make bars, spring rolls, paper mache. Um, I surround myself with creative people, and that enables me to be creative. And so I want to talk to you about three things today. And uh, the first is an idea. The second is how that idea influenced my life. And then the third is how is the product of that influence on my life. So the idea is simple. I didn't come up with it. Um, but I've lived my life by it. And it's, it's defy doubt. And that's it. Super easy. So you could have self-doubt. Uh, you could be surrounded by doubters. Or you could have society impose doubt on you. Those are basically the three doubts situations that I thought of. Um, for me, despite spending the majority of my life performing music in front of people all over the world, I'm petrified of public speaking, which you may notice right now. <laughs> so not only do my hands shake genetically, uh, my hands have always shaken since I was a kid, but when I'm nervous, it's way worse. So I apologize if I make you nervous. But I'll get there. I'll get through it. So today is me facing my self-doubt and challenging it, um, which is important. It's been important in my career and in my life. Uh, the second thing is I have notes because I'm not very good at this. Um, so uh, whenever I'm in a group of people uh, working on a project and there's people around us that doubt, um, and this is where the name of the speech comes from, whenever there's doubters, I just say, no, 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 it's going to be cool. And that's it. So that's basically, if I had a motto, that would be it. No, 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 it's going to be cool. So you can't, you can't open a bar. <laughs> and, and the third is, is sort of the, the societal part, which I don't even know if is a word, but I'm going to say it. Um, I come from a basically an isolated town. El Paso in the 90s was more isolated than it is now because of the internet or lack of the internet. Um, there's virtually no national music attention on this city. And when me and my friends decided that we wanted to start a band, uh, almost nobody thought that it would be more than a few wasted years, um, except for us. And so that was defying their doubt. And this is how it's affected my life. So in 1994, I was 17 years old, and I was going to El Paso High. I was a senior. Um, and I was called into the counselor's office for the, uh, the college application meeting. And she said, where do you want to go to school? I was a pretty good student. I was in the top 10, probably top 10 people in my class at El Paso High. And I said, I don't, I'm not going to apply to college. To which she said, I'm going to call your parents. Which she did. She called my parents. And so that night, I sat around the table with my mom and my dad. And they said, um, so you don't want to go to college? I said, no, I've been playing in punk bands around town. And I'm hooked. This is what I want to do. And my dad said, if you want to be in a band, that's fine. Just be in the best effing band you can be in. And that was it. So, yeah. they're cool. And punk rock gave me the power to defy doubt. So I didn't have to be classically trained. I didn't have to be traditionally talented. I just had to want to do it. And if you want it, then you got to do it. So that's what I did. I started with my parents' blessing. I took my modest college savings. And I formed a plan. So step one was write some songs. Step two was release the songs. Step three was go play everywhere and then repeat. And so 1994, we formed a band called At The Drive-In. We wrote the songs. Uh, we learned what it took to put out seven-inch vinyl. 
Uh, we released it ourselves. It was called El Paso, sort of what we thought of the city we were from at the time. Uh, it was a three-song, seven-inch. It came out that fall for $3. We literally couldn't give them away, literally. And at one point, we just called them the $3 coasters because most people would just say, why do you want to make a record? Well, because records are cool. That's much better. Um, at that point, we learned how to find other bands in other cities in Texas. Uh, we called them. We asked them if we could come and play. And we played four shows in the fall, basically, of 1994 in Texas. Punk rock taught me that I could do it, but Jack Kerouac made me want to do it. And on the road, he showed me that it's not the journey. I mean, it's not the destination, but it's a journey. Um, I had no intention or desire to be a rock star. I just wanted to see the world. That's all I wanted to do, and this was my avenue. And there were a lot of highs and there were a lot of lows uh, doing this, and I probably learned more than I did if I went to college. I definitely spent more than if I had gone to college. In between every tour, we would come home and we would work and save our money so that there'd be gas in the van to go where we were going. And after seven years, uh, from the age of 17 to the age of 24, at the drive-in went from practicing in my parents' front room, God bless them, to the cover of magazines all over the world. And we defied doubt. And in the last months of that band, January of 2001, I stood on a stage in Japan at a sound check when nobody's there. I stood on stage by myself and I started strumming some chords on the guitar. And what came out was kind of this country song. And I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew that I liked it a lot. And when I started telling my friends about it, the doubt was pretty clear in their eyes. Uh, it's not what I'm known for. It's not what I was known for. We were loud, big, heavy, explosive, not calm. But I said, nah, 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 it's going to be cool. Come on. I'm going to have to turn this on. Are you getting that, Brian? Huh? This is why you sound check. way more comfortable doing this. When the song was done, the band was pretty much done at that point, too. And I continued to work on it, and I started recording demos uh, of these songs in Tornillo and at, at a place called Sonic Ranch, which is good for the soul and one of the treasures of this area. So uh, when the song was done, it turns out that it was about West Texas, which I never thought it would have been. And apparently over the years of traveling and touring, I fell in love with this place. And that song uh, grew into a band, which is kind of country-ish with, with a punk rock soul. So, I don't, I don't know where I'm going to go or how I'm going to get there, but it's going to be cool. So, thanks. <laughs>
destroyed by fortune and derailed men by fame. We searched the world over and found it so same. West Texas love of love is far few bad swing. And tonight was spread, girl. You see just what I mean. Everything is down. We fell in love. You set me up to knock me down. New swollen clouds brought the sky to ground. You set me. Thanks very much, guys.